Well, Keith Johnson, thanks for doing the podcast. Thanks it's show business. <laughs> it's good. I'm glad to, I like to have people on here who have like hung with, like in the periphery of life yeah. and comedy, but we've never actually had like a, a longer conversation. So this right. will be fun. This is good. And I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, same, likewise. Yeah. So tell me, how did you get started in comedy? Um, I got started in comedy. Hmm, I've always been like a relatively funny person or at least weird. I'm the only child. So I've always had my weird sense of humor. Um, after college, um, I, had, I wanted to go to law school. And I had a buddy, you know, tell me, he's like, I think you're too funny to to go that route. Yeah. And he signed me up for an open mic. And I loved it. I, I It felt right. And I was like, okay, I like this more than anything else I've ever done. And it just connected. And then I just chased that and landed in San Diego for a little bit. And then I landed in L.A. So I've been out here for about eight years now. Nice. So. Was that person who gave you that recommendation a lawyer or a comedian? No, it was my best friend. Um, it was my best friend and a boss that I had. So while I was studying for the LSAT. I, so, oh, so you were there. You were on the yeah, way. Yeah, I was oh, locked yeah. in. Yeah. I, was, I was ready to do it. Um, I, I sold cars because I took a job that I, I would just be able to quit. Yeah. I knew in my head. I got like an eighty five thousand dollars job. I'm not going to follow my dreams. I'm going to be chilling. I'm going to live. Chill, the yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to go out to open mic. So, um, I was selling cars because I was like, when I'm ready to quit, I'll just rage quit and leave. Um, and my manager was one of the people who told me he was like, look, he was like, if you want to be a lawyer, he was like, I make as much money as a lawyer. He was like, they make about two hundred thousand. He was like, it's not not that much. He was like. But I feel like you have something. He's like, go, go try out, be, be creative, see what happens. And right. Yeah. And so both of them kind of nudged me in that direction. So it is a lot of uh, dream and life giving up for a salary. Sometimes it can be not, Ugh. I mean, it's, that's still a lot of money, but it's not like it's a, it's a trade off. Yeah. It's a security for Absolutely. dreams trade off. Yeah. I, I mean, I was talking to a buddy recently. I was like, I feel like we took the red pill in life and just to start chasing dreams and go that route but be nice to take the blue pill for like eight months get yeah. some money get get dental get your uh cavities filled get a health pl uh care plan and then get yeah. some medicine and then like stack up and then come back dip but, in and out yeah but right. i guess that's what writing jobs are for and, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. that's so. the uh because we all need something mm -hmm. with comedy it's like comedy slash podcast comedy mm -hmm. slash actor right. slash writing like yeah, you said we have like, to do more than one thing it's i mean you could there, we have a lot of friends who are just comedians mm -hmm. and they were just touring but like it's it, it's very complimentary to yeah. have both they're yeah. not like it's not like a, a day job so to right. speak it is a day job mm -hmm. but it's very it can help you become more known as a comedian right. to have a successful podcast especially right like we all have friends in the couple last couple of years their pods are like number 10 and you're mm -hmm. like Oh, you're really living it now. Yeah. I have a buddy named Devin Costa who kind of took away a step back from stand up and, you know, he's lolling or just unenthused about yeah. stand up. And I checked in with him and did his podcast. And the he's just like dialed the fuck in. Just, and he, he's talking fast. He's just riffing. And I'm like, oh, you found it. This is, what oh, this is your thing. This is what you're supposed to do. And, um, I mean that's it's good. I think comedians could do anything. We're we're literally capable of being in any, and that's our job is to be anywhere and um, to kind of poke fun of whatever the thing is. And I think, you know, that's why we're able to do anything. It's like we could be directors, we could be uh, politicians, we yeah. could be lawyers and shit. Because like we're that. doing everything. Yeah, we're we're directing our own self mm -hmm. on stage. Yeah. So. I, sometimes I catch myself. I'm like. Oh, I don't like the way I just moved there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not moving like that again. Yeah. There's and, uh, the nuances. You're just like, okay, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like how I looked it, or I'll watch myself back, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I, didn't, I don't like my body, like mannerisms and shit like that. Right, right, right. Have you ever been unenthused yourself? Uh, I think I'm in the state of that right now. Like, I'm, interesting. I'm in between whatever the fuck is supposed to happen. Um, so I'm just toiling away with my head down and i'm yeah i don't think i'm bored uh i'm just well yeah i think the only child in me is a little bored so i'm starting to get a chaotic energy about myself um 
so yeah, I I'm looking forward to having like a project maybe that brings me some income or bring some something like I something needs a break. Yeah, I don't know what or when, um, but I'm just you know my head's down and I'm a little unenthused if I'm being honest. Do you think? Because I feel the same way actually, mm-hmm. and I've talked to several other people, mm-hmm. and I feel like it's the Delta. Yeah, I feel like because it was, it was back. Yeah. And then it's like, just kidding. Right. And it's still back, but it's like something about it was just like deflating. Yeah. I think it was two things. It was that. And then, I mean, we were around during the pandemic where we were hitting mics and, yeah. you know, trying to get a leg up. And then comedy came back and it was just like all the people who took a break were just like, yeah, we're back where we needed to be. And it was because of politics. It wasn't because of skill. It wasn't because of... Um, you know, work ethic, it was just, you know, politics. And Do you mean like in terms of getting good spots yeah, and stuff? good spots, management, all that shit. Like yeah. I, I think the people who were earning their keep uh, kind of got bumped out the way a little bit. And I, I, I think I felt a little slighted about that, even though I should, I, should, I don't really have anything to complain about. But um, that caused the unenthusiasm because, you know, we were working our ass off. You know, yeah. we were risking it all, trying to find, you know, new notes to play with. Right. And um and then the delta hit and it's just yeah, you lose any any hope that you may have. So you're just like, uh, here we go again. About to go up and you're you're like, uh, yeah, I gotta light him in forty two seconds. Why yeah. ask me about fucking sit? yeah, and then But you're finding off. a good host is hard. Yes. I don't have very many people mm-hmm. that I can go to. Right. And when they're busy, I'm like, Okay, I'm gonna get some hosting. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing, the balance about it that's hard is like being a comic and a producer mm-hmm. in terms of that politics of it is that's the part I find challenging. Okay. Even to the point where it's like, I want to curate it even more and that's going to make people upset. I yeah. already know. Someone, I think John Marco was a guy who told me he's like starting a show is a great way to make a lot of friends quickly mm-hmm. and a lot of enemies over time. Yeah. I'm like, that's hilarious. Because you'll feel away if, if three or four lineups pass and you're like, wait, I fuck with this guy. This is my friend and he hasn't put me on yet. Like, yeah, what's yeah. going on? Oh, yeah. I think we all have those yeah. feelings right now f- mm-hmm. about different people. And I think that running a show allows me to take that step back. To right. be like, it's not always personal. Uh-huh. Like, we want to balance the lineups for a lot of different reasons. For right. funny, for flow, for gender, for right. race, for, you know, diversity is probably a better way to say it. Uh, balance it for diversity and it's like but sometimes you can't always do that no and sometimes people cancel yeah and those are the, those are the ones that bug me the most <laughs> it's like when a, a lineup gets a couple people cancel you're like this is a perfect lineup everyone everything's right everything's and right and then three people that are there at the uh-huh. show they're like i hey, can you go up and all of a sudden the show is unbalanced yeah and you're like i wasn't trying to make it and i'm not talking about funny unbalanced just like diversity yeah. unbalanced and i'm like I wasn't trying to do that, but mm-hmm. look, life happens. Right. And with, when you're booking four people, you know. If one woman cancels on your show, it, it throws it off, especially if you're like, okay, I got two girls, two guys. Yeah, yeah. One cancels, you're like, Fuck, I think man. it's, <laughs> you got to evaluate the shows over time. Uh-huh. If it's like every week is a little off, then you're like, all right, what's happening? Right, right, right. But like a one off, you know. You know, you, you'll get the pass. You get a pass. And it's also like, I think we know our intentions. Mm-hmm. And also, it's like, you want the show to be good and funny first, right. I think. Right. Uh, a lot of my friends throw shows, and I think I've learned not to take it personal. It's like, if I'm not on it, it's like, make the show the best you can, and then fit me in where you can, or yeah. use me as your you know, your flank guy. Like, if you, if you need a backup, like, I'm there. And I think that's how I use my friends, and my friends use me. It's like, bro's on bail. Like, come, come through. I got gotcha. yeah, yeah. yeah, I like being a... Like a, a an assassin, if you will. If you just come in with your little briefcase, do do do. Yeah, that's what comedy is. Yeah, yeah. the travel <laughs> assassin. You uh-huh. go in and you do your stuff and you leave, and uh-huh. it's it's a uh, a lot of waiting and like right time until that moment. Yep. But yeah, you got to be. And if you're reliable too, like I love having the guys that I can call that are like, okay, these are the people I go to right away when, when yeah. someone drops or I need somebody, and it's yeah, being consistent and just a good, cool person is right. like a big part of it too. Like. Are you extra? Uh huh. Are you gonna like bring extra energy that's not required? Yeah. To this situation, I don't need that. I, I just... don't need. I don't need that. <laughs> yeah. Come in, shake my hand, sit down, go in the corner, and then just get the job done. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, my guy is Sean Grant. Like anytime I need, like just in any role, a host, headliner, just a guy, just to go up. Okay. I call Sean, Sean Grant. G. 
and he'll get the job. And he he uh, was I, I'll call him a mentor of mine. He went to the same school as me. Okay. So my best buddy who got me into comedy was like, I gotta connect you with my buddy. He's super funny, and it was Sean. And, and he's know, out here. Yeah. Um. Good guy. Yeah. I, I'll uh. Yeah. Intro let, y'all. Yeah. I'd love to meet him sometime. Yeah. 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 Always gets the job done. All like. I've seen him in the worst situations. His energy is always like just superb and it gets the flow all the way up, you know, better than most people. Yeah. And uh, so I always have him as my assassin, if you will. Yeah. It's yeah. a talent to host well. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. I hate hosting. It's, really? It's, yeah. It's my weakest point. Like I love coming in and just doing my thing and leaving, but like hosting, if I'm, if I'm off as a person, which most of the time I am because I'm doing like <laughs> mental gymnastics in my head. If I'm slightly off and I have to host, I I, I got to do like an hour extra prep work because it's like, oh, yeah, they're going to fill it and then I'm going to fill them and then we're not going to like each other. And then I'm going to like hate coming up every time. Yeah. But I've been getting better at it. Yeah, you got to bring it as a host. Yes. And not always, you don't have to be like ridiculous high energy if that's mm-hmm. not you, but you got to be present and really right you, your job is to set the room right yeah. above your act mm-hmm. and uh it's talking to the crowd figuring out what's right and who's making who, sure who's who's yeah. what's what and uh in some ways it's your show yeah and in canada the host is the most important part of the show yeah which is i think is very interesting uh-huh. and fun too it uh i learned i think in canada and then in the uk there's completely different host styles mm-hmm. uh yeah there's more i guess more presence, more interactions with the host, uh, you know, over there. And I'm like, okay, I could learn a thing or two. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like, I love it when I watch a great host because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that's how you do it. Yeah. I, wa- I remember watching Jimmy Brogan early on. He uh-huh. was like uh, hosting for Jay Leno at mm-hmm. the Comedy and Magic. And I was like, oh, he's amazing. Yeah. And you're just like watching him work the room and like talk to these people and talk to them and just, and like the amount of listening he was doing. It changed the way I thought about hosting because he's letting them get their talking out mm-hmm. and then flipping it and making it funny. Okay. And I was like, that's Oh, important. that's, that's great. Yeah. I don't listen at all and I don't interact with people. <laughs> that's probably <laughs> that's the name my, of your album. Yeah, that's my, I yeah. don't interact. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. That's my problem with hosting is like, I'll, I'll say hello. And then I'm like, I, I don't want to talk to you really. You just listen. Yeah. So but a, you've been getting a lot of spots with the comedy store and the new thing. So it yeah. seems to be working out for you post COVID. I'm yeah. I, and I think that's why I'm like, I have nothing to complain about really. Right. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm working my way up to where I want to be. And, and so I'm grateful for that. Um, do you think that's a podcast thing? Like if the pod with you and Luke goes to the next level, is that, would that be part of it to really? I think it would benefit him more than it would benefit me. Um, and I think it has benefited him because he he ha- he plays a role with the comedy store that makes him kind of unapproachable. And so I think I, since I'm out and a little more accessible, our juxtaposition together makes him more approachable. And like it, it, I think it will help him in, more. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to take it to the next level, and if it, it if it goes well, I, I think it could be like a staple podcast and comedy, like where we're getting bigger names yeah, yeah. and we're really peeling them back and saying the thing. Because um, you guys don't hold back on your pod. No, we name names. <laughs> I think that uh, we had a we had a, a a good episode with Robert Smallwood, Rob Smallwood, and you know I, I talk to him a, or vent to him a lot, and yeah. oftentimes he agrees with me and. Uh, we had him on the podcast and he just guns a blazing and uh, we never looked back from that episode. And uh, we've had some like rocky moments, but I, I think it was for the benefit of, you know, we're just trying to make comedy better. We're, yeah, we're trying yeah. to hold people accountable um, and just talk to people and like, cause everyone feels the same way. Like if, if I think what started that is like, I, I was around maybe like 10 conversations and everyone was like, well, you know who is getting blah, blah, blah. And I was like, who are you talking about? And it was always the same person. Right. And I was like, oh, we all feel the same. So say the name. And then it kind of like had like a like a cathartic moment. I was like, yes, just say the fucking name. This is, we're not trashing the person. We're just, 
you know. Do you mean when you're having these conversations in private or on the pod? Uh, a name? little bit of both, yeah. yeah. And it was like, oh, you're talking about this person. Or they're like, I can't say it. And then afterwards, I'm like, yeah, we everyone feels the same. So like, right. just say the thing. We'll get it out. And uh, I figured if um, if somebody comes at us regarding the podcast, it's either a conversation or... If they're like, well, I'm better than Keith at comedy. I'm like, okay, well, we'll I could make a show. We'll put you on, and I'll put, go on right next to you, and we'll see who's better. And at the end of the day, we become friends. And have you have you done that? No, no, uh, one, no one's came at me like that. Uh, <laughs> but, oh, but you're ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm ready for it. But uh, I that'd mean, be hilarious. The, yeah, that'd be a good show. That would be a good show. And I we would invite them on the podcast, talk shit, and it'd be a health like. It, it's not a fight. It's just a. It's a you know back and oh, forth. Oh damn. Um, but that would be a great show. Like yeah. I would, that might be the best show. You right. know, if you do, but like, if you advertise it like that, mm-hmm. like, Hey, if you, if you think kind of like the, if you think you're better than me, uh-huh. pod, you come Just like, it's kind of like, a, it's like kind of roast battle, but like in terms of a set, not directional. Yeah. Right. Cause that's the genesis of roast battle, right? Mm-hmm. It was two people who are about to fight. Uh, Kenny Lyon and then I forget who else, but, uh, yeah, they they were about to fight and Moses was like, no, like, don't do that. And. Yeah, they just said and jokes. changed comedy. It changed, changed, yeah, it changed, changed the comedy. store. Like yeah. it became uh, like a Goliath in uh-huh. the industry, and it still is. Like right. it's now it's in the main room, mm-hmm. right? I think on television. On yeah, television. <laughs> uh, it made history. Yeah, yeah it made and, careers. And Brian Moses was where Luke was now. So like you know that it's a possibility that a podcast or a moment like that mm-hmm. could be a defining moment to someone's career, especially at the comedy store. So right. Uh, I think that's why the podcast would be good for Luke or even me. Like it, it's made me a few connections. It's gotten me out of my, um, I don't know, like self comfort zone. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, my comfort zone a little. Do bit. you think uh, the way you're saying it's it would be beneficial to Luke more than you? Is that like based on personality? Because like if it pops off like monetarily uh-huh. and like Patreon or whatever, whatever uh, way you're trying to monetize it. That's going to be life changing for you true, both, true. right? Um, if if I'm being like very detailed about it, I I think I think uh, Luke likes podcasting more than actual actually doing stand up. So like I want to tour and do all that shit, and I think Luke just you know he he wants to do good shows, have a podcast. He's like Marin, you know he, he wants okay, to, yeah, yeah. like have a solid ass podcast. You know, write a book probably. That's me putting me on him but like right 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 you know be the guy at the store have a dope podcast do shows and golf you know right and that sounds like a good life that's a perfect life <laughs> it's like uh you know for me i, I want to do a little bit more i want to like create television do the blah 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 right. so it's like that's a part of it but that's just one thing so i see what you're saying so for him it's like that uh, that will be his thing that's his thing yeah. but for you it's just part of your bigger thing picture, yeah. bigger picture stuff. <laughs> oh that's great do you spend uh are you a writer as well uh yeah i i think i lean more creator like where i'll have the vision and i'd love to have writers to be like write hey, it write this <laughs> and do this and then they give it back to me and i'm like all right this 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 like but uh, punch it up and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah um i think that's where i work best but now i'm learning oh i have to write the script just get everything started i have to do the thing yeah i mean uh, hey we we want to do a show this, we got to do the yeah, photoshop this is we want to do a podcast we got to do the you got to do the camera you got to do the audio you got to do the lighting yeah i i struggle that's one of the biggest things i struggle with is the delegating because like i find it faster to do it myself yeah but it's exhausting mm-hmm. it's exhausting putting that all like i have to do flyers for like another show mm-hmm. and i'm like ugh. it's annoying but <laughs> Uh, going back and forth with someone and like you're waiting for it yeah. and it's like the day before that's also annoying mm-hmm. and so you're like what's less annoying right, right. Uh, what is my opportunity cost of doing in the short versus... term do it myself feels better yeah in the long term have i not put the effort in the right place in uh-huh. the right bucket and i feel like that'll catch up to you yes and you, you me whatever like because stand-up is writing and doing it every day uh-huh. you can't all of a sudden become a hundred percent better this week. Right. Right. It's the same way you can't go to the gym today and be brolic tomorrow. (laughs) You can't have abs tomorrow. Abs is a process. Right. And so like, 
am I detracting from the things I really want to do slowly over time? Mm-hmm. And I won't notice it until it's uh, like... You don't notice it at all. And it's until it's too late. Worse. Just like gaining weight. I gained back eight pounds <laughs> just by slipping a little uh-huh. on the margin. A beer I, here. <laughs> a little, I, I was at the improv and they brought out, hey, do you guys want some uh, breadsticks? I was like, all right. And we ate uh, the breadsticks. And I'm like, uh... It, my, I probably gained about 10 pounds too in a week. It's so crazy. It's quick. Yes. And it took me so long. Like, I was looking back at old episodes of my podcast and I was like, yeah. oh, shit, I liked how I looked. I, I looked lean. And I'm looking at myself now. I'm like, ugh. But. Um, and it's like a, every week I see my side profile and I'm like, oh, wow. I look. <laughs> you, you, you know, you, you're, you're watching your own face right, too much. Right. And it's uh, you're like, oh, I know where that came from. Yeah. That's <laughs> breadsticks. Goddamn breadsticks. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's it's um you can't get abs in a day. You can't be a great comic, you know, overnight and you got to learn the little details and I think I'm looking back I'm grateful for having to learn those little like having to know how lighting works. You're just like, oh, "Okay, this is important." Yeah, I don't know if I know how lighting works. I'm pretty sure a ring light above the camera is not how it works. I don't think I... so, but I think you're close to figuring <laughs> it out. You're like two or three I steps. I just used what I had, yeah, to yeah. be honest. But And I, I've seen episodes, I'm like, that looks good. Looks good enough. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you'll finally run into a lighting guy. He'll be like, oh, you just do this. And it's yeah. like, oh, okay. Do you know enough about it to tell me? Absolutely not. Okay, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I came in, I was like, okay. You, you, I trust it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You have two computers and, uh, and that thing. So I'm like, you know what you're doing. I just like made a set with stuff I have. I'm like, I have an old ASR. Uh-huh. And for those who know, that's the, the keyboard that Timberland did all and the Neptunes okay. used for all their stuff. I have uh, some old speakers. Yeah. I have books. You got books. Books are important. And I was like, yeah, it's a kind of important. It's a business oriented podcast. I got yeah. business books and I'm like some comedy books. I'm like, hey, this is a set. That's it. I got a table and that was it. Solid desk. Editing bay right here. Yeah, yeah a you're... couple mics mm-hmm. from... Uh, Andrew Steven, who he has that show with um, Wayne Fetterman, The History of, of Stand Up, which okay. is really good. And uh, yeah, then I was like, oh, what cameras? I saw these are the cameras on Rogan's pod. And I was like, okay, that's probably the right one to get. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and then you're running. You're then running, running. Your, your offense right there. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I just didn't want uh, DSLRs where I had to stop, start and stop it. Okay. Because uh, that 30 minute thing just seemed annoying. Yeah. And I got friends who do it that way. And it looks a little crisper, but. Uh-huh. That's uh, we're all watching from our phones anyway, and you're not going to like notice the difference. Yeah. What I wasn't ready for was that I started audio only, and the pod you get so many views mm-hmm. on YouTube. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is like almost half. Yeah, I uh, we we made the switch too, and it, we had to make the adjustments of how we looked on camera and what yeah. side is better for us, and um. Uh, lighting and shit like that and it's like it, it pays off did i get your good side i uh, i think so yeah yeah we're all, we're all <laughs> like for me it's yeah, both yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every side looks good you know it's not a bad side but yeah yeah um what are the things that you do uh daily and weekly to make sure you're progressing and getting better at comedy and uh, making sure the writing and the jokes aren't falling behind um as of now it's been i've been focused on my morning routine that's what oh, I love on. routines. Yeah, Let's yeah, hear routine. yours. Uh, so on a perfect day, I'm waking up. I'm doing some sort of like meditation or, or breathing exercise. I'll go for a walk. I'll uh, listen to an audio book on my walk. I'll go work out. And then I'll have the day just to do nothing. And nothingness creates something. Yeah. And then um, I'll hit mics. So... I'm, what I'm supposed to be doing during that time is writing a little bit, like maybe write on the script for an hour or work on some editing for an hour and then just have nothingness. Just watch some TV and just be like, oh, here's an idea. Here's what I think about something. Right. Uh, Does that go into your phone? or? Uh, sometimes, but it's usually like... Jay-Z? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I try to like build it in my head or at least have the premise and then I'll bring that premise on stage and it will be either perfect the first time I say it or horrible and then I'll build it to there. If it's perfect the first way I say it, then the next time it's going to drop and then I try to build it back up. Um, If it's horrible but I like the theory, 
because uh, most of my jokes right now are coming in theories. Like, oh, this is what I believe in, and this is a... So that's a good place to start, though, because mm-hmm. then you f- actually feel something. And, yeah, and then I'm trying to, like, put jokes here, 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 and then it's just, uh, like, a one-sided conversation from there. So that's a perfect day. Um, do I do that? No, because I'll wake up, check my phone, and then I'll jump on Twitter. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then I'll eat shitty, and then I'll, I'll skip the walk, and then I'll go work out thinking that will fix everything, and it won't, and then I'll come back, and then I'm... In my head. So, I turn the phone off now. I need to get like I got you. a burner, uh-huh. like a Boost Mobile. Ooh. It's five bucks a month. I forward the number to the burner. I turn off the phone. Beautiful. It's a game changer. Holy shit. That's a great idea. Yeah. And then I do my, if I have to post, I just do it from the Facebook business, which is amazing, by the way, if you haven't used it. Okay. That's a, a burner. See, what I tried to do is um, I wanted to get out of Apple because I, I think that's the issue for me. Um, so I went to go buy an old Blackberry and I was like, hell yeah. I was like going to go old school and the technology surpassed Blackberry. So you can't even get the old Blackberry anymore. So it's like, I'm stuck with Apple forever. And I'm like, fuck man. Like I can't get out the game. It's like, uh, hotel California. You could, you yeah, could, yeah, yeah. You could, uh, check out, but you could never leave. So. Exactly. You can't get off the glass screen phone. No. There's no more. I mean, you could get a flip. Like I have a flip. I, and- I, I'm. I'm probably going to do that. If if you see me with the flip phone, just yeah. know I copied your shot. And that, yeah, that's a, do, that's good. There's also uh, Robbie Hoffman. She inspired me for it because okay. she has the light phone, uh-huh. which is like it basically tech. It, it is a screen, mm-hmm. but it's only black and white, and it texts and makes phone calls, and that's it. I, I fucking love that. That's and uh, yeah, because the, the same thing with the scrolling. Because mm-hmm. like I'll need to post to promote something, and mm-hmm. then 45 minutes goes by. And they're not always good emotions from no, that 45 minutes. It's, what the fuck? <laughs> it's a lot yeah. of, like, angst. Well, Neil Brennan said, that, I reposted his thing because it was such a great post. He's like, something along the lines of, social media was invented or whatever to connect with our friends, think about all the connections, and now it's just a way we compare our personal brands mm-hmm. and how our brand is doing relative to other people's brand. Ugh. And that's not healthy. It's not. It, it it will ruin your morning and ruin your day. Yeah, it'll ruin your life, yeah. essentially. There's two things. Like when you see something, you're like, how did that person get that? Mm-hmm. And then how do I get that? Mm-hmm. And that can, can be, depending on how you take that, that can be healthy or not. It can mm-hmm. be like, oh, that's a good idea. I should do that too. Or it can be like, meh. Yeah. And the meh is like not a good. Right. But we all go through it. it I, I see something and I'm like, am I getting left behind? Yes. Am I for, forgotten about and right. I'm not and what helped you know what helped me is running a show because you realize how many funny people there are yeah and you're so like, many holy shit I didn't even have this person on and you know it, it, that put things in perspective for me but yeah I think of a, a, another phone will. <laughs> where's your show now um I run it out in San Diego so um, oh dope. yeah so I started there and then um basically so my first credit was through san diego um and i i wanted to like keep i want in a, not in an arrogant way but wanted to give back to the scene but also bring la comics there because um the comedy store had something similar like they have a la jolla comedy store and that was created yeah. to give headliners a vacation so they'd send burnt uh-huh. out guys to la jolla they'd go chill on the beach do a weekend show and then come back refreshed so I, I, I kind of took that idea as like, I want to bring guys who are like kind of burnt out. They're funny. Come down, do 20, get paid, get some beers, go back up. I love it. Yeah. Is it at La Jolla's store? Uh, no, no, no. It's uh, it's at a brewery. So I have a buddy who uh, works at a brewery and then we started doing that. And um, so, yeah. That's Dope. Been, What's it called? Uh, Second Chance Comedy. Second chance Second comedy, chance comedy yeah. at a brewery vacation, 20 yeah. minutes, 20 minutes is like you, you get paid. Yeah. Your DMs Just, about to go up. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. But I don't book it. I don't book it. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> How do you not book it? Um, I, I book it, but okay, yeah, I don't yeah, book yeah. it. I don't, yeah, I yeah. tell people like, uh, cause I don't want to get caught in. Yeah. Like, I, I got a booker and that was hosting and getting a booker with uh-huh. the two things that changed okay. my life. See, for me, it was getting a marketer a marketing person okay and then getting a producer so my my friend is basically the producer and he just wants he has no desire to be in comedy but he likes being around comics uh i think he's okay with that i think (laughs) he's accepted um 
he doesn't have the itch, but he just likes being around the internet. Right. Like, he keeps tabs on like who's who, and he'll tell me like check out this person for me. I'm like, all right, and then yeah. uh, so that's um, great. So he does all the posts and the flyers. He, and, he manages oh, yeah. the uh, everything else. So I could just be a comic, and that makes life fucking easy so yes yeah, so you don't um, have to worry about like oh how, how many people are gonna right, be right. there I'll, I'll stress out still because i'm i'm a control freak but overall it's just like i i trust him running it and now the next thing is finding a host so i have to find a good san diego guy that i trust right. or a girl um and then go from there nice so, and lo- someone who's local and mm-hmm. can just like you know let me do my 10 minutes or 15 whatever i'm feeling that day let them do their thing and then uh so yeah nice how many seats uh i think it i think we're maxing out like 50 perfect um, i love a 50 yeah 50 is perfect like yeah. it's just uh and then 25 on a light night and it's like yeah we're there yeah we're there. but a nice 50 is like it's not too much pressure to sell out it's uh it's a good amount of people mm-hmm. you can really like tie the room together right, right right it's a small venue so we're chilling and so yeah ultimately if it if it goes well We'll do a bigger venue and then maybe we'll have like a festival. That's me being ambitious. Oh, no. We'll, festivals are great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have like a little like a um, camp blog and all like Tyler the Creator where he has all his yeah. friends on and then bring camps of guys down. So it'd be your camp coming down with your guys. Right, right, you right. You know, um, so-and-so's camp coming down with their guys and then you just have a good ass time. You know? Oh, that's great. So, is yeah. there a San Diego comedy festival? There is. There okay. is. Um, I don't know if it's running this year. It might be, but it used to be at the Comedy Palace. But San- so the reason why I did that is San Diego has like the infrastructure to be a very strong scene, like a Chicago or um, like a Denver or so, you know, just like a Portland. But the guys move up to LA fast. Yeah. And so then it will leave the city kind like of a brain under- drain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Underdeveloped. And then they got to rebuild again. So like, now we have the opportunity to have some like veterans who are make like Brian Simpson, Taylor Thomas, and all the, all these folks are like San Diego guys. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Now we'll have the names, and then we have some guys also like just with families who are good comics, like a Dustin Nickerson, and yeah, so yeah. he'll, you know, they'll be able to be like, oh, this is what comedy looks like. This is what it's supposed to be, and right? Then, you know, you'll start changing the scene there. And we have like six clubs. So it's, oh, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's good. So it's enough, it's enough of a nucleus to really make yeah. it happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, cause that, that brain drain thing happens a lot in just life. It's oh, like when yeah. you're too close to something. Right, right. Hunter Hill was telling me that like when he had the rec room uh-huh. in the OC, it was the same thing. It's yeah. like you're building the scene, but also the scene's leaving. Yes. So it's like, it's kind of like, it's a weird dynamic. Uh-huh. You give them a good set and then they get confident and you're like, I could do this in LA. And then they go to LA right. and you're like, oh no, I'm not. And then you're bringing people from LA. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, it's kind of like there's a uh-huh. bit of a flow that you yeah. don't have to deal with when you're in LA, which has mm-hmm. all of showbiz. Right. And right, so, right. same with New York. It's like, there's enough yeah. there that you don't have to like go to Buffalo and exactly (laughs) tell tell them to come down yeah um and i think that's i'd I'd like to see that like if i could keep you know my foot in the door with san diego and also like use that as my playground to figure shit out away from everything so i'm not like burning good sets at the at the comedy show when i finally get up there and i'm like okay i need to like really bring my a game um yeah, that's smart. And yeah. it's also like the crowds are different there. They're mm-hmm. like, they get dressed up to go out. It's like they're having fun. They it's it's a very fun. different from LA's mm-hmm. vibe. LA is just like, mm, like yeah, I it, could do that. LA is like, it can be everything. Yeah. Yeah, but one of them is that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll call like, it the Toronto. Yes. <laughs> Ugh, it's annoying, but, you know, it, I'm I'm learning to balance both. And I think that's been the, the fun part of it. I, I, I need to stop calling it like an issue or a problem or a dilemma it's like no i'm having fun doing this yeah exactly uh what's one thing you would change like remove because we talk a lot about adding things on Mm -hmm. our plate like we could add this and be better but what's one thing you could stop doing that would take you to the next level man um like a actual thing or a mental it can be as simple as like drink less it could be as complicated as like do this thing differently with the podcast like technically if i could stop overthinking I think oh, I, I like that one. Um, I overthink a lot. And so like, I'll give you an example. I had a set at the comedy store last week and, um, I at went, the belly room in the belly room. I was there. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is great. Uh, I, so I'll give you my mental of that. Okay. I went in front of Shane 
And so I was thinking, okay, Shane's the guy. He's coming in. I want I want to be the guy. Okay. And so I was like, okay, I got to do this joke, this joke. And I started overthinking and I didn't have fun. And there will be a moment where I'm the Shane. You know, this is his moment now. Yeah, yeah. And my job was to, you know, and, and that's what the comedy store teaches you. It's like, you're not it. You're a part of it. So build the show. And one day you'll be it. And one day you may not be it, you know? Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. one day Louie will pop in and everybody's not it. Everyone's just a part of watching him. So, uh, you know, that night Shane was it. And yeah. I felt like I did okay. I did decent. But I, I think it was because I was overthinking it instead of just having fun. Yeah, and that's and, Shane Gillis for those who don't. Yeah, know. Shane yeah, Gillis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he just dropped a very funny special. But yeah. uh, it was so I overthought and it pulled me from being present. Okay. So if I could stop overthinking it, and that's how I'm, I'm overthinking and how I'm navigating. I'm overthinking and when when I'm what I'm making, how I'm making it instead of just being like i'm taking comedy too serious which is a juxtaposition right. you can't take comedy serious it's fun so if i could stop overthinking um and if i could find another keith that could help me just be me so like in san diego i have my buddy eric who okay helps me run the show where i could just be me and we're finding the the beauty in our dance where we're like the roles uh, are forming and I'm like, thank you. This is all I need. So, um, you know, I, I, I think I feel like if I don't do it, it won't get done correctly. Right. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. trusting the somebody, yeah, yeah, yeah. trusting somebody. So letting go and not overthinking would be the two things. Did you overthink it in terms of like your set that like, you're like, I have to do this joke, this joke, like you had it all lined up and you're overthinking bit, about it a little bit. Um, I, I had to do this joke, had to do this joke. And, you know, I don't know where I'm, I, I'm in the middle of the middle somewhere okay. of this comedy source system. So I want to make an impression. I yeah. feel like I'm, that's the hardest thing about that. Yeah. You always want to, yeah. <laughs> want to make an impression. And then comics are watching and they're like, yeah. you know, and I, I know the feeling because, uh, you know, comics are coming in and being like, who's this person? Why is he on this list? Or why is she on this list? Why am I not on there? So if you're not, doing well comedy like who the fuck is this guy why is he yeah, yeah, yeah. right before shane so that's overthinking nobody's thinking no that. one's thinking that yeah yeah um yeah because i watched your set and i didn't see any of that that didn't translate okay <laughs> <laughs> i mean see, nor nor should it that'd be pretty uh, amazing if it did right. but like yeah you, like we don't notice that yeah. watching um w yeah it's like cool calm and then underneath that is chaotic it's yeah. just like ah, it's um Jesus playing in the background but uh it yeah so like i i'm overthinking so I, i'm trying to find my placement uh because i i do want a level of ease or i at least think that when i get to a certain place it'll be a little easier um i could just put my guard down and be like okay finally i could just yeah get these late night spots and just start building th these 15s now instead of like showcasing 10 i could start building Right, I, it's all overthinking, and yeah. none of that really. And it all just comes with all, time, yeah. yeah. So, and it comes with time, yeah. and that's what I had to learn. I'm like, my time will come, and then there will be another Keith trying to bury me, and I'm like, why are you doing this? Just have fun, bro. I fuck yeah, with yeah. you. Like, let's have fun and do comedy. And then when I saw Shane, there was an ease to him. He was just like, yeah, let me just ease into this joke and be right. fun. And I'm like, oh, that's what I didn't do. That's what I lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. So, um. Well, that's good. That leads right into our usually our closing question, which okay. is the goals. So you want to do a late night goals? Um, man, I don't know if I want to do a late night and watch me do it when um, I, I want to create um a really good special or two. Okay, that's like you know sh shifting. That's that's like paradigm shifting. Um. In terms of its production or just like the material being like that? Both. Okay. Just um just like high quality and jokes, it's meticulous, it's it's art. I wanna create a good piece of art. Nice. Um I wanna create some good quality television shows. Um and then maybe the third thing is uh, this just started, um, since we're talking about business. Yeah. Um I created this like it's an LLC now, but 
<coughs> fuck it, we'll, we'll share it. Um, I want to create this, like, I guess the closest thing is, like, a record label, but for oh, comics, yeah. where, uh, excuse me, there's something in my throat. Oh, yeah. Like 800-pound gorilla? Maybe. 801-pound gorilla? <coughs> yeah. 900-pound <laughs> gorilla. That's the LLC. No. Yeah. Um, where comics have access to touring, they have access to creativity, um, they have access to, you know, just being able to make whatever the fuck they want and they're okay. signed. I don't know if they'll get chains like a uh, Rockefeller, yeah, but uh, uh, <laughs> there, no there's an aesthetic, yeah. there's an aesthetic to like, even when you saw like Gerard make his special and Rami made his special, it looked the same because it was the same aesthetic. Um, yeah. And, uh, the guy who did the one in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Drew Michael. Drew Michael, yeah, yeah. So, like, his whole camp has an aesthetic yeah, they on do. how... Yeah. And that's very close to a record label, but... Like a movement, in a way, too, yeah. Just a camp of... You know, I think Adam Sandler has something similar, where he gets a movie deal, and then he's like, David Spade, Chris Rock, pull up. Yeah. Shit like that. So, that's what I'm hoping to do. Create good art, and then um, maybe make a vehicle so others could do the same. That's dope. So. Kind of like uh, ATC too, and like uh, mm-hmm. is it LOL Network? Kevin Hart. Yeah. yeah. So the yeah, there's like uh, I mean, yours will be your your own thing. And right. You'll do right. it differently, but like there is a certain brand that that gives the people who come under that brand kind of like. Do you remember? Uh, it sounds like you're a Kanye Jay Z fan, but there's that skit on one of Kanye's albums. Mm-hmm. When Dame Dash is telling Kanye, better go, get, an, get an, umbrella. an umbrella, or are you gonna get rained yeah. on? So kind of like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to make the umbrella. Yeah, umbrella records <laughs> LLC mm-hmm. coming soon. So yeah, what what inspired that was I was listening to a Cameron interview, and he was like, "Yeah, we'd go up to Def Jam, and our office was shared with Murder Inc." And I was like, "Wait, these are rappers. These aren't like." I thought they were meeting on the street or like, okay, this is the game plan. It's like, no, yeah. they're in offices in New York, you know, just going to business meetings. I was like, oh, this is, it, comedy could be like that. You yeah. know what I mean? So, Yeah, and comedy we'll is like that, but sometimes uh, it's it's either sets or a hang. Mm-hmm. And that's sets, hang, and podcast. And uh, there is another level to that, which something you're sounds like what you're doing was that you can bring – the business part right, of it right. to Bring it the as business well. and then, so when you're meeting you're not just like hey do my show hey get on my podcast hey let's do something bigger so i love that I want to build an ecosystem i and, love it yeah, yeah so that's the goal we'll see yeah well tell people where to find you keith your uh, socials your at keith johnson hq good friends bad people um podcast so yeah dope check it out i've checked it out it's fun stuff and uh we'll see you soon thank you man appreciate okay. you having me thank anytime you.